Welcome back to TalkNorth.com. Thank you for listening. If you can, please download before you listen. It helps our business. I'd also like to thank our producer, Brandon Morton, and let you know if you'd like to sponsor this program or any of the programs on the network. You can reach me at jsouhan47 at gmail.com. TalkNorth.com is powered by Bite Squad. Go to BiteSquad.com or download their app. Get food to your door in minutes. Use the promo code TalkNorth to get your first delivery free. Talk North gets you your first delivery free. Interesting day in the podcast world and on this network. Uh, Roy and I just did a long show about Joe Maurer and uh, and playoffs and all kinds of interesting topics. And just as we were packing up, we found out that uh, Paul Molitor has been fired as the manager of the Twins, uh, which surprises me. I think it surprises Roy. So here's the format for today. Uh, We have a a really good conversation about Joe Maurer, his career, his farewell, his Hall of Fame chances, and we have some other thoughts on uh, on twins and baseball topics coming up later in the show. But we wanted to do a quick hit on Paul Molitor on the news, and we will certainly be revisiting this topic uh, as we go forward in our later October shows. But we just wanted to address the news. So once again, this is Roy Smalley's Chin Music. This is part of the TalkNorth.com podcast network. Uh, Thank you to Bite Squad for sponsoring. Go to BiteSquad.com. Use promo code TalkNorth for your first delivery free. Thanks to our sponsors, Barry coffee.com, whizkids.tech, it's W-H-I-Z-K-I-D-S dot tech, and Tony Hoagland, your State Farm agent in Champlin. Uh, let us get to the news. Uh, your level of surprise, and, and why do you think this happened, Roy? A uh, scale of 1 to 10, my level of surprise is probably at 8. Uh, I'm very surprised uh, and, frankly, disappointed. Um, it, 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 and I'm not exactly... You know, Paul got afflicted. It's amazing. There, it's kind of like uh, a um, influenza. It goes throughout the world every once in a while, and and managers get afflicted with this. And people that won uh, manager of the year uh, the year before all of a sudden get this uh, stupid flu, and they become dumb the next year, and and they deserve to lose their job. So I, I and evidently Paul got afflicted. He he became he became dumb overnight, and uh, you know I. I, uh, uh, sarcasm aside, I don't. Uh, I don't think you can lay uh, at Paul's feet what happened uh, with the Twins this year at all, and uh, it, it, and it it felt. I guess my bigger surprise is um, why why they gave Paul three years when it, it this just feels like, and everybody speculated that Derek Falvey and Thad Levine would want their own guy. As a manager, when they came in, mm-hmm. and there was speculation that uh, it, you know that that would be the case, and, and uh, owner Jim Paul had said, "No, you have to keep Paul." And so they were uh, they were able to do whatever they wanted in the organization, except hire the manager that they wanted. And you know, maybe they had somebody in mind at the time. Maybe they just wanted their own guy. I don't know the answer to that. But this feels to me, my gut reaction, and we just heard the news. So I'm speaking off the top of my head, but my gut reaction is. They've always just wanted somebody else. Yep. They had to. Uh, they were forced to hire Paul when they got here. Then they were forced to extend him because he was the manager of the year, and there's no way. I mean, ha- and mm-hmm. how could they not? And Paul wouldn't do it for less than three years, and so that's what they got. And um, I imagine it was an interesting conversation going to uh, Jim Polad and saying, uh, "We're going to eat the next two years of Paul's uh, be, uh, contract because we really think." that we need somebody else if we're going to turn this thing around. Um, I think that's an interesting concept, A, based on what I've seen as Paul as a manager, and B, it must have been an interesting conversation uh, to say, there, here's uh, two years of Paul Molitor money that we can't spend on a player uh, you know, going forward. So I just think it's, it's a real, it, it's, that's why it's eight, a scale of, uh, uh, a eight on a scale of 10 uh, for me, and, I, and uh, we'll have to wait and hear more. You know, from I guess press conference this afternoon. This afternoon, we're talking here on Tuesday midday, and there will be a press conference this afternoon. So we'll we'll have more to say about this, uh, about the comments that are made about it. Uh, You know, we're both flying blind here. uh, Speculation uh, as to 
why and how, but my, my gut reaction obviously is not all that favorable. Well, and I, I think you summed it up very well. I think that uh, there, there was a reason that as Paul was winning the Ma- Manager of the Year Award last year and the Twins were being celebrated as you know a team that was really a, a very well-run young team, very promising, I think there was a reason why it took a while after – the end of the season for them to give Paul the deal. You know, I don't think that was really what that was in their plans and they got forced to do it. Uh, so as you said, the simplest thing here is they always wanted their own guy and they're the losing the season gave them an opportunity to bring in their own guy. I agree with you. I, I think it's a wrong move. I think a manager should be fired. If he loses the, the clubhouse, Paul hasn't lost the clubhouse. Uh, if he's impossible to work with, that's not, the case, whether it's front office or support staff, uh, can't run a game. I don't think that's the case. I think Paul's a very smart manager uh, or is unwilling to adapt. And I think Paul's been the opposite of that. I think he's been very willing to adapt to you know, kind of the analytics world. And and so I'm, I am very surprised. I, I've been telling people I thought he was definitely going to be back, and I was wrong. And, I, and that that's me misreading Falvey and Levine. Yeah, and I don't know how it could have been read uh, uh, differently, but I, I would, uh, you would have a better read on, on front office uh, uh, potential or front office characteristics and traits that, uh, or signals or whatever than I, than I would. I just think about it from a, from a um, clubhouse standpoint, from a player standpoint, from a, a um, uh, watching baseball and watching the manager manage standpoint. Um, I think you lay this at the feet of the players and, and uh, this year, and um, and not not the manager. I, I mean, <clears throat> could he have? I'm trying to think. Uh, did uh, Eddie Rosario make some base running mistakes and throw to the wrong base a couple of times? A few times. Yeah, he did, he did that. Uh, did um, uh, did they not develop a uh, a base stealing attack? Uh, as well as they could have, um, maybe they had to. They, you can't steal first. They had, I mean, for first four months of the season, they had a hard time getting guys to first base. Um, so I, I, I then say, so your your studs, how did they perform? You know, well, Buxton no show, Sano no show, Polanco no show for half a season, uh, Dozier no show. Uh, Kepler twenty home runs, but hit two twenty. So and, and then, well, we gave you a starting pitching staff. Oh, really? Lance Lynn no show. Odorizzi so so. Um, you know, I mean, I, um, I, I just I, I don't see where a manager could have affected any of those players' performances who were so vital to whether the tw- Twins were going to win or not. I just don't. I just don't see it. Right. And I think that, and I think that's where they're going to have tough a tough time justifying is that they brought in a lot of players. And listen, I thought they made good moves. I'm not criticizing them. I'm not either. The, I'm I thought not either. I thought they were moves. good. They were good moves yep. that didn't work out, but they weren't good moves that were Paul Molitor's fault. Well, they didn't I mean, work. They, they didn't work, fail they didn't to work, work out because yeah. of Paul Molitor's right. the way I should try to phrase That's it. right. They didn't fail to work because Paul did something that uh, that messed up the whole right. uh, situation there. That that was, you know, that was <clears throat> clearly not the case. So I, I mean, we'll wait and see what's said. I don't know that anything earth shaking has ever said in, you know, press conferences like uh, what we're going to hear from today. But no, it's usually pretty. De- it's defensive <clears throat> maneuvers. So uh, we'll see. And and that in and of itself. I mean, maybe maybe there'll be a, a sentence or two that we can we'll look at and say, you know, okay, this this is um, at least we have an idea of what they were what they were thinking. Um, you know, none of this. Ultimately, none of it matters until the club starts winning. And ultimately, the club's not going to start winning until the players that they have or the players they're about to get start performing up to their potential. And the one thing I know as somebody who writes about all sports, talks to all people about all sports all the time, there's a real disconnect between the way people, or I don't know if disconnect is the right word, there's, there's a misunderstanding among the general sports populace as to how much a manager can help a team win. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about that. And people think it's football. Listen, the football coach sets the schemes, hires the coordinators, tells the coordinators what to do, uh, influences the draft, influences free agency, handles discipline, uh, makes – I mean, a football coach controls everything. And a baseball manager 
tries to get his guys to play 2% better than they're already playing. It's really true. And it, the, the, one, the similarity for any coach, and in the case of baseball, he's called a manager, is to set the, the personality, the tone in the clubhouse, the personality of the team. Football, is, and, and I believe basketball, um, are sports that where it's easier for the coach to do that. It's very, very hard to do to drastically change a team's personality by the sheer force of a manager's personality. Uh, and so if the front office thinks that the, the Paul didn't lose the clubhouse, they just don't like the personality or they feel like they need a different personality in their manager for this particular team, that's a really difficult uh, call, I think, because you're playing 162 games, you're playing every day, you're playing 162 games in 180 days. The best thing a manager can do is, number one, is manage the pitching staff, and the second best thing that he can do is is uh, manage the expectations and the, and the personalities to the best his, of his ability in the clubhouse. And then the third best thing is is the five or six or seven or eight games that he will really affect the outcome of the game by managerial moves, uh, non-pitching staff related. And I look at, again, that's what's kind of built into this, my, my sense of this whole thing. All those things are built into my saying, I, I just don't see where, it's, where Paul failed in any of these things. And least of all, I, I don't know, was he... Was he supposed to sit Rosario down for a week or, or pull him out of a game when he, when he threw the wrong base? I don't know. It's, it's, hard, to, it's, it's hard to make. This game, today's game is different. Those things aren't happening in the game today. They just are not. There's nobody that's doing that. So it's hard for me to understand what, uh, what might be the rationale. We'll be talking more about Paul Molitor as we continue doing shows on Roy Smalley's Chin Music. For now, uh, we're going to go on to our regular scheduling pro- <laughs> regularly scheduled programming where we talk a lot about Joe Maurer and the, uh, and the Twins and the playoffs. Uh, you'll hear that now. Thanks for, uh, thanks for bearing with us as we try to splice this show together. It is all good stuff, and we wanted to make sure you heard Roy's voice on the Molitor firing. We will, uh, we, so here we go, talking about Joe Maurer and other topics. Welcome back to Roy Smalley's Chin Music. This is our baseball show on TalkNorth.com, which is now powered by Bite Squad. Go to BiteSquad.com or download their app and get food to your door in minutes. Enter the promo code TalkNorth. It's been one word, TalkNorth, to get your first delivery free. We do appreciate the people who, uh, who support the network and this show. Thanks to our regular sponsors, BerryCoffee.com, WizKids.tech, and State Farm agent Tony Hoagland. So I was at the ballpark on Sunday, Roy. And I wasn't sure what to expect. And I thought Sunday was a reminder of how great baseball can be because nobody's in a rush. You can have the time to have Joe Maurer walk up to the, ma- to the plate. And you can have time to have people give him a standing ovation. You can have time for him to put on the catcher's gear, walk out to the mound, and the whole ballpark just sits and enjoys it. You can't really do that running a down and out in the NFL. <laughs> Somebody's going to kill you, you know? So I thought it was a great day, a great moment for Joe. And I think uh, after we get your reflections on the day, let's ask the, the big question, is Joe a Hall of Famer? It was a wonderful day. Uh, it was an amazing, uh, amazing um, Quasi spontaneous uh, moment, um, and to your original point about baseball, I'll digress here just a bit, and back up and say, I re- highly recommend people go on the internet and find former Major League Baseball Commissioner Bart Giamatti's musings and writings on uh, the greatness of baseball and why it is so. This is one of those. Uh, moments that Bart would have loved. Uh, Bart was a great commissioner who died way too soon, and we didn't have the benefit of his um, great leadership and his love for the game and his his intelligence and his his visceral understanding uh, uh, and connection with with the game. But he would have loved the Joe Maurer uh, love fest uh, on Sunday, and the and and the fact that. Uh, the game can stop and and recognize that. And so I, I would just encourage people if they think that that was a special moment for uh, Joe and the Twins and baseball 
uh, it, it, go, go do some additional great.